everyone is interested in good health. Everyone is interested in preserving his own health and that of his family and friends. That's why we have these meetings, to give you the facts, the facts which will help you to guard against illness, which may cause suffering and unhappiness for you and your family. Medical science is hard at work, fighting to prevent suffering, preserve health, prolong life. But that's only half the battle. Equally important is knowledge on the part of everyone, all of you, your families and friends, of how to use what the men of medicine have to offer. Time and again, science has found a strong weapon against the disease only to have it rendered useless because people did not know how to use it. In a broad sense, this very situation exists today. One of the most prevalent of all serious diseases is still causing tremendous suffering and working widespread damage to our national health. May we have the slides, please? Thanks to the microscope, physicians and other students of science have learned to recognize many of the germs which invade the body. Among the many types of germs are these biscuit-shaped invaders called the coccus group. This coccus group includes these, the streptococcus, the cause of many skin and internal diseases, and these, the pneumococcus, the cause of pneumonia. And this is the staphylococcus, which causes boils and carbuncles. Another important member of the coccus family is this fellow, the gonococcus, which causes vaginitis, ophthalmia neonatorum, frequently called baby's sore eyes, and gonorrhea, the widespread disease with which we are concerned at this meeting. Lights, please. The gonococcus is a weakling when it is on the body surface and can be destroyed by soap and water and most antiseptics. But once entrenched in the tissue, it is stubborn and dangerous. Gonorrhea has caused more suffering than any of us would care to think about. Thousands of women have had serious operations Unnumbered marriages are childless. A tremendous number of people are blind because this disease, a disease which medical science can cure, is still the most prevalent of all serious human ailments. Like many other diseases, gonorrhea begins its attack on the body as an acute inflammation. The germs gain a foothold in the mucous membrane which line the sex or urinary organs and after a few days cause swelling, tenderness, and a discharge. The disease often spreads to the internal parts. In a female, the organs of reproduction are frequently involved causing great pain and disability. The tube through which the ovum or egg passes may become permanently closed. If this happens, the woman cannot become a mother. In the male, the same kind of damage often occurs. The narrow tube through which sperm or seed passes may be permanently blocked. This prevents the man from ever becoming a father. For this reason, gonorrhea is called the great sterilizer. When the disease is allowed to go unchecked, it often attacks more remote parts of the body, the heart, the kidneys, the joints, 
may suffer serious injury. Gonorrhea is one of the oldest afflictions of man. For centuries, it was confused with syphilis. In 1767, John Hunter, a famous Scottish physician, actually infected himself with syphilis in a mistaken effort to prove that syphilis and gonorrhea were one and the same disease. It was not until 70 years later that Philippe Ricoeur, working in Paris, demonstrated conclusively that syphilis and gonorrhea are two quite different diseases. Finally, in 1879, Albert Neither discovered the germ which causes gonorrhea. He was the first to see and recognize the gonococcus as the cause of gonorrhea and his work opened the way to a series of brilliant discoveries by scientists working in research centers in many countries. They grew the gonococcus in their laboratories and produced valuable laboratory methods to aid in diagnosis. They learned how the disease passes from one person to another. They learned that now, as in past centuries, gonorrhea is spread to men mainly by infected prostitutes and by infected men to their wives and families. It spreads almost always by sex contact, although little girls may sometimes be infected from towels or clothing carrying the gonococcus. One of the great gifts of science to humanity has been the discovery that a silver solution dropped into the eyes of babies born of mothers who have gonorrhea prevents infection and blindness. Until recently, the treatment and cure of gonorrhea was slow and expensive. Hundreds of drugs and dozens of instruments have been used. None was satisfactory. But science ever searching has found new methods one of these is a method which raises the body temperature to fever level, resulting in destruction of the gonococcus. But this fever treatment is reserved for a few resistant cases. The newest weapon is a group of chemical compounds popularly called the sulfur drugs, which are revolutionizing the fight against the gonococcus. Today, modern treatment under a physician's care cures at least eight out of 10 cases, cures and stops the spread of the disease. Medical and chemical research have already done wonders, but they are continuing the task of developing even better and safer methods of treatment. But though these drugs are effective, they are not without danger. Serious results and even death have occurred when they were taken without the guidance of a physician and the various examinations he makes for the safety of his patient. An infected patient must always remember that a physician is needed to cure and prevent the spread of gonorrhea. Avoid advertised remedies. Avoid quacks. Don't attempt self-treatment. All are extremely dangerous. Mere disappearance of symptoms does not mean that the patient is well. Only laboratory tests can finally determine that. And only a physician can be trusted to administer safe and effective treatment. Yes, most cases of gonorrhea can be cured quickly and easily. The first thing a person who suspects gonorrhea must do is to go to his family physician, or if he has none, the nearest health department, hospital, or medical society will tell him where to find diagnosis and treatment within his means. All over the United States, thousands of capable physicians, hundreds of reliable clinics, and scores of health officers are finding, treating, 
and preventing gonococcus infection. With the cooperation of the public, the prevalence of gonorrhea can be reduced. Suffering can be prevented. Sight can be saved. The gift of parenthood can be preserved. It is everyone's job, yours and mine, to see that the facts about the dangers and the cure of gonorrhea are known to everyone. For when ignorance gives way to knowledge, when furtive fear yields to confidence, when people learn to consider gonorrhea in the same light as they do other dangerous infections, then, and only then, can science be successful in the fight against this most prevalent of all serious human ailments.